more part of the bookmaker. It wasn't great. Tell me when. Well, dark, drizzly, <coughs> boring. I think what I might try to do today, the shoulder's been really, really bothering me, so it's really distracting. But I think I'm going to try to turn everything on. And then systematically, I'm going to run in the house and see if I can find some label stickers so that I can put new clean label on this rather than buying a new sticker. Um, because some of this stuff is crossed out, but where they have these labeled is only supposedly on these that are for the 12 volt, but these are crossed out. These are marginally in the right place, but I need to turn all the lights on, all the small appliances on the 12 volt so that I can pull these one at a time, figure out which set goes to what, because then I'm gonna try and re-identify these, because something I noticed White goes to white. Black, black and black, black into black. But then there's this one. This, the, this one is confusing to me because why is there a black into a white? But there's 12 volt. Water pump and everything was down here. but I don't have the water pump anymore. Hmm. The water heater's still in here, but I capped it off for the water pump because I don't have tanks. I have direct feed. So that little guy is probably gonna have to come out. But I am trying to try to refocus my brain a little bit to try and get something done because I hate sitting idle, but my shoulder, I don't know if I slept on it wrong and made it worse or what, that it is just killing me today. And I was going to try and see about relabeling so I know where this one needs to tie in upstairs where I ran that up top. But I am just having a real struggle today with any kind of motivation because I hurt. And uh, I need to call and find out if they sent over the prescription for a little bit of pain relief because it's getting to a point where I can't just keep avoiding taking anything. I'm gonna have to start taking something because this is getting pretty bad. And I haven't gotten word back on approvals for the surgery even though they did schedule me for the appointment dates but it's not till December. And in the meantime, it's just progressively getting worse. I'm staying up later and later because I hurt too much to do much. So it's hard to be tired. And then I'm sleeping horribly. So I just don't feel great. So I do a lot of window shopping and I've got a chair that's ordered so I won't have to sit on the dog's cushion anymore. But it is nice being able to sit upright because the tough shed bedroom only has a bed. So I have to be laying down a lot. And I was laying down a lot when I was in my semi truck because there's not really a lot of places to sit other than the driver's seat, passenger seat, if I was eating or something. Would have been nice if they had the dinette set. <laughs> that would have been more comfortable, but that's okay. I'm just really out of sorts today. You know, it's a dark and drizzly day and I want to get a few things done, but it's uh, really uncomfortable today, so I'll tinker. Um, I did I did put this up last night. It's actually a scarf, but I wanted it for the patterns because it blends right into the tree. That's the closet. And uh, 
I think it does a pretty nice job of just subduing whatever's in there. That was one thing I did yesterday. <laughs> and then I've been looking at um, possibly rearranging and shortening these up because I've noticed that when I'm doing stuff in the closet that my hair gets hung up on some of these. So I'm going to shorten up the tree a little bit. And maybe paint some petals because that's something that I can do and get the rest of the glow in the dark up where I wanted it to be. That's really all I have for an update. It's, uh, it's slowing down a lot. So... <laughs> It's getting harder to stay busy. But I'll keep going. I'll keep going. It's just not going to be very much every day anymore. Um, they're very small, very tedious, very intricate little things that I can do that are okay. But then I have to stop almost right after I'm done. Things like putting in some more decoratives. I got a bunch of these ordered that are a bunch of different colors. And that looks really nice up there. It helps to finish the corner a little bit. also been looking at um, different cabinetry designs, uh, more dressers, little side table kind of thing that I can do up top in the room um, or rooms because I do have a spare room up there. Um, just places to organize things that I can anchor to the wall so I don't have to remove them when I transport it. It'll be anchored and that's the requirement for the the shipping company said as long as it's anchored and it doesn't move, then it can go in it. So, you know, the wood stove and everything, because it's an anchored unit, can stay just fine. But the outside stovepipe has to come apart and put the traveling cap back on. Anything that's loose, all of the tools, everything, has to be put away and moved into the horse trailer by the time I get ready to move it. Which is going to be a while. Um, the weather's really bad now. Oh. Sorry. The weather is really, really bad now um, going across. Wintertime is just not the time to transport these, especially because this one, the weight ratio is improved, but still not great. I did a lot of weight shifting in here when I did the remodel to put the new floor in and trying to shift as much of the weight further back so that it lifts up the front end a little bit more because it's really tongue heavy having the bathroom and everything up front and being two story. It does travel really well though. It's just that my truck wasn't heavy enough to be able to rely on it to do the transport. I really need a one ton. I have a three quarter and it transported it home, but she was pretty light on the front end of that pickup truck. And that was before the remodel. So it was really tongue heavy. Um, I haven't hooked up to it since I did all of the, the heavier rebuild stuff, but we'll see. Cause I do it actually, I, I live really close to a scale right here. Uh, trucking scale so I can go down there because it's got a, a digital readout at some point I'll hook up to this thing and take it down there and get an exact weight on it from the the scale and that way I know where all of the weight's sitting because I can I can actually weigh the trailer by itself and then weigh how much it's on the rear axle of my pickup because I can weigh my truck independently and then subtract that weight from the unit so I know exactly where the weight ratios are I can also do that on a cat scale, <laughs> but the cat scale is a little further away. I don't want to have to move this thing too far because at least the scale here, I've got enough room to turn it around and just take it right back home. I'm just tinkering, just trying to keep my brain focused on anything other than how uncomfortable I am. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's getting harder and harder to do. So I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. I am just fascinated with this thing. I'm so proud of this. And I just put sealer so it's all water sealed. So there's no more needing to readjust the, the mortar. It is the way it's going to stay. It's a little dirty right now. But all of this is all sealed too because that's a threshold for the door. So I put the sealer so that the water will not soak into it and soften it anymore. And granted, I'll probably have a floor mat or something here. Because I still need to clean my floors, which is the other thing. A little more tidying up because that was a seam that was threatening to pop up. 
And it's since been repaired, but it's the edges of it that I needed to scrape off and clean up a little bit more. But my floors are really dirty right now because it's really muddy just outside my door. And, uh, yeah, trying to keep it clean in here right now is not happening. <laughs> I try, but, you know. Trying to keep it clean in here when your dogs want to come in and visit after they've been running around and wrestling with each other in the mud. Um, trying to wipe this down has been a constant chore. <laughs> Every time they come in here, they track in a ton of mud because they're out there playing. They're just having a blast out here. That's why I threw their coats on because I knew they would be just making a mess. Can you find a stick? Is that a good stick? That's a pretty small stick. <laughs> so my girls are out here just wrestling and having a good old time playing in the mud. Yeah, making a big old mess. Muddy feet. Mm-hmm. God, their coats are so dirty now. They've just been out here goofing off. And then we go like this. And then we, we go like this. Try to keep it to a minimum until I can get a real mop in here and get all of the dirt picked up. And I sweep probably every two days to collect anything that falls off of the firewood. And Cleaning is pretty much a full-time chore. Just to keep that little space right there enjoyable. But I really can't wait for that chair to get here. I mean, it's nice having something I can lean against rather than, you know, hanging out in the tough shed all the time. But I like something more than just a cushion on the floor. <laughs> so need to see how the furniture is going to fit. Because if that first chair fits, then I'm going to have one on this side, which is this side of the fire. And then I'm going to clean up this space, cap that off. I'm probably going to leave the inlet just because it keeps the hole covered. But I'm going to cut off the end of the hoses that went to the water tanks that used to sit here. Just big bulky block of box that they built for it. I'll put something in the hole or cover it somehow. And then the other chair would sit right there. So that it's an enjoyable space. And then this little bit that's left right here on this side of the chair... I have the arms that I ordered with the tabletop that's been sitting out here against the mirror. I'm waiting for the chair to get here so I can move the chair around and decide if it'll fit there. Then I'll put the drop arms in here, put the tabletop on it, and I'll have a fold-out table right there. I may do something with this other side, but... For now, I'm just hanging out. Just, just hanging out. There's not much I can do today other than try to keep my shoulder warm. Because every time I start getting chilled, it makes it worse. So, watching the dogs play in the mud and walking back and forth, checking on the old man, the old dog that's in the house today. And this is it. This is this has been it. It's just been back and forth, tinkering a little bit here and there. Sitting in here, trying to experience the space to decide exactly how I want to tinker on it and make it better. Right now it's a mess because I've got so many tools and everything in here. But I don't really want to move a bunch of it out to the horse trailer because I know I'm going to need it in here. So I'm trying not to use the cupboard spaces to put all my tools in because I don't want, you know, a caulking tube to leak and make a mess in here 
but the more I can clean out of here and keep it as empty as possible, I can decide how the space needs to be used in order to keep as much open space available to keep it comfortable, but then also to re-engineer and pre-plan how I want to build the storage spaces for the upper level. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time up there. I think I only slept in here like three days and not consecutively just to see how well it would re retain its heat at night, <clears throat> which it does a phenomenal job. I can actually still leave the windows open in the main loft while I'm sleeping and be comfortable so far, but we haven't dropped into like the negatives or anything yet. It's just barely dropping into like the low forties, not quite freezing temperatures yet. So as the temperatures decrease, I will probably be spending more time out here to decide what I need to get to move the air in here properly. I know I need to get a couple of fans because it is a stairwell now to move all of that heat upstairs properly. So I'm thinking maybe like mm, this edge here, maybe I can put a little draw fan right there on the edge that would just pull it straight up. But honestly, it, as long as I get one of those, um, those small fans that sit on top of it, just to blow it this direction towards me should, should resolve the issue, but we'll see. It's going to be a lot of, you know, I know I keep saying that because my brain is running a million miles an hour trying to decide how I want to work on this place. And there's only so much I can tolerate every day, which is making it really frustrating. I love my house. I love my little house. Every bit of this is me. I've put all of the work in 100% myself. And I think I've asked for help twice. And that was just because I needed an extra set of hands. Um, one was the roof to replace all of the shingles with metal roofing. That made a big difference during the summertime to keep it cooler up top. Because the tar paper wasn't allowing any heat to escape. It was actually retaining it that much more and making it that much harder to get it to cool down even when the sun went down. Especially because there's only two windows up top. I still need to plan on putting more windows in, but I don't want to do it until it's sitting where it's not going to move anymore. I don't want to put those windows in and then transport it because windows is not something I'm familiar with doing. And I want it to be sitting permanently stationary where it's going to live forever <laughs> before I try to do anything like that. Cause I'll probably have to call somebody to do it because that's just something I'm not I'm not comfortable with watching DIY videos to do. So it is coming along, but I'm, I'm getting tired of just doing these little snippets where I'm barely doing a damn thing, at least in my eyes. Um, as much as I come out here and do something every day, that's the goal. I'm not doing as much as I wish I could do. But once I got that roof replaced, I, you know, I asked for some help and my brother helped me with that. My dad gave me a hand with the roof cap because my brother needed to call it quit for the day. He needed to go to bed because he gets up stupid early in the morning. Um, and then a buddy of mine, when I reframed the whole upper level, came over. Luke. If you look back on my videos, Luke is awesome. Um, I actually love that he got into trucking after him and I were talking about some of the benefits of it. And he does uh, farm. So he's got farm endorsements. He's loving it. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of him. I don't get to see him as much now though, but it was cool. He got to help me out and, uh, the rest of it's been all me. It's been me learning how to do everything. Um, I put in the carpet myself up top. I put it on the trim work myself. I put in the flooring myself. Um, I had another buddy that was, uh, working in construction. He came over to help me figure out the, co the configuration of the stairs so that they were workable. They're tall, but they are workable for the space without taking up the entire wall. Like I, I really didn't want to have it happen. So we figured it out. And, um, actually some of the design work was based off of tiny homes, 150 best designs where they aren't normal stairways. <laughs> 
They aren't normal stairs to get up to the to the lofted sections or second levels, depending on what design it was. Some of them are very, very tall. Um, it's just for climbing in to go to bed. So you're not running up and down stairs, you know, doing a bunch of stuff. I mean, unless you're like me and you're remodeling everything. But I did put, I have a pipe handrail that I put in on that side. And then this is part of the construction. I decided to utilize the design with the tree and add in what would look like more tree branches as part of my railing on the other side. So there's actually one that's underneath the flowers that you can't see. And then I have two that are exposed. So the top three steps actually have railing because you can hang on to this one as you're clearing the bottom quite safe I'm actually really really happy with this I was worried when I first bought it because it needed so much work it needed finishing because the girl I got it from stripped out all of the carpet and all of the flooring so the vinyl flooring it did have was no longer there it was just bare wood um, she took out all the carpet that went up the stairs all the carpet that went up and around there was a catwalk that was way too small it had a huge ceiling fan a standard size house ceiling fan that they had to use spool ends stacked together as a giant spacer to even drop it away from the pitch of the roof enough that the fan blades could spin properly but then because it was so close to the catwalk if that fan had been on you can't use the catwalk because it's just too close to where you have to lean over the rail in order to get around the catwalk because it was so close to the ceiling so one of the other things I did when I rebuilt this um, not only did I want to have the second floor so that I had more floor space to work with and somewhere to set up shelving that's going to go along that wall, but it was also because it was so close to the ceiling, you had to crawl on your hands and knees and there was no padding for you to crawl on. So I put heavy duty pad. Um, it's not the standard carpeting pad. It's a little bit thicker. And I put the carpet up there that's a pretty decent shag. But I also, when I framed all of this in and I had Luke helping me, um, I lowered it four inches. I put it almost right up against, actually, the um, framing of the windows. It's, it's resting right on the trim because I needed as much space from the floor to the ceiling as I could get away with. And that was one way to do it. So I dropped the entire thing a whole four inches, which actually made a pretty significant difference when you were up top. Because now you don't have to be forced to be on your hands and knees. You can actually do a squat walk across. As long as you got good knees, right? Well, there's quite a bit that I did to this place to make it mine, to make it work for me. And I'm not super tall. I'm pretty average. Um, I'm only 5'4". So... By lowering the ceiling, I can touch the lights, but I still have to get on a ladder in order to do anything if I wanted to change the hue of the light bulbs or something. Um, the other thing I discovered, I'm glad that I didn't go with the white paint on the ceiling. I really debated on that, but when I discovered how much of an issue it was with flies and how many times I was swatting flies on it, I grew up in a house with white ceilings. And... We had a lot of bug splat on the ceiling that was visible because it was white. So after discovering how many flies I was having to eliminate because this year has been particularly bad and they're, they're pretty attracted to a lot of wood interior homes anyway. Um, I was really, really, really glad <laughs> that they weren't white because <laughs> I had a lot of bug splat. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy with everything and how it's turning out. It's weatherproof. It's comfortable. It retains its heat well. It actually has really decent thick, I think those are three inch board that they put sandwiched between the siding and the actual interior wall. So it's got decent insulation. They actually put the insulation board up underneath the trailer too. 
that I am going to have to upgrade because some of it's been falling down and I have to rip a lot of it out anyway to get to the plumbing so that I can redo all of that because the plumbing has to be better insulated. Uh, I will be getting skirting. I'm actually going to set it on a decent size pad in Missouri so that I can put a pretty decent skirting around it, but it's also going to have the insulation board tacked to the back of it that you won't see that's going to go underneath, which will help insulate the bottom of the trailer. Um, I did that previously with an RV I used to have, and it did a world of difference to keep it warmer inside. But it also, um, during the winter months, when it does drop below freezing, you really want to be careful because there's a lot of stuff in an RV setup that is a, exposed on the underside. Um, you'll find that a lot of um, a lot of RVs have issues where their pipes froze, and a lot of it is because they did not put the skirting around to give it a break from the wind, because the wind chills what's going to freeze everything faster than anything else. And the more insulation you can put behind it to help keep it retaining its own heat for any heat that's created inside the unit, it will transfer through the floor just a little bit, just enough that it'll keep it above freezing temperatures. Um, at one point with the RV I had, I still had to put a little space heater down underneath it just to keep it above freezing because I did run hoses and regular water line and they, they didn't have the extra insulation underneath that particular unit that I was in. The other travel trailer that I had that I upgraded and put a pot belly wood stove in um, that one was very minimally um, cared for. So when I got it, it was honestly because I was living at it at the same time that it made it a lot harder to work on. There was very little that I could actually get accomplished in that one. So even as a project, I resold it and the gal that I sold it to was pretty tickled. She actually really li liked that I had done a hand painted mural. Um, that was on the back drop over the bed. Uh, she was pretty impressed with that. She was actually really, really happy to get her hands on it. It was just a nice secondary, basically guest house uh, for a friend of hers that was gonna be coming by a lot. So she loved that it didn't have to have electric heat. That one was pretty cool. I never got around to painting it though, so the outside of it still looked really bad, but um, inside it was really nice. I did end up getting quite a bit done and it was waterproofed. I also built a really nice awning over the, the one side over the door because the door that it had was really old and misshapen and it didn't close right. So I was having trouble finding the replacement door for it. And I ended up just having to put like little catch hooks on the, the frame of it so that I could pull it tighter and packed in a little bit of door seal all the way around it so that I could pull it really tight at night to try and keep as much heat in as possible. But it's because they were single pane windows. With the old aluminum frames, a lot of my heat was going out my windows. And I had not discovered the insulation pads yet. So that was a pretty cold winter, especially because I would work all day and there's nobody there to put any heat on it while I was gone. So by the time I got home, it still took like two to three hours to get it warm and comfortable in there. And then by the time I got up again in the morning, it was ice cold again because it, you know, I couldn't keep that pot belly stove going all night. I had to go to sleep. And that was the only reason I didn't like having the pot belly because it didn't have enough venting controls on it. And because it was so small, I could not keep it even with a warming fire in it all night. It would, it would still go out within a few hours, which was frustrating. But that's it. That's True Talk with Phoenix Gate. So, catch you on the next video, guys. Um, sorry, I know I'm long-winded. I was lonely. I felt I needed to have a conversation with somebody. Well, it wasn't much. But at least I felt like I was doing something. I moved my storage bin up here which of course is too big for this space I need to get one that's like half that size to sit up here which I'll do eventually but I'm cleaning it up a little bit before I get comfortable and relax that's the tabletop I want to use for the folding 
the fold away table, but I don't know how well it's going to fit in that space yet. So, but at least I'm doing something just can't do very much. By the time I was done using the sawzall and getting all that wood cut down a little bit smaller, I'm done. I was hoping to fill it a lot more than that, but I couldn't go anymore. So it's okay. I'll go have lunch and keep trying to find little busy tasks. And one of my little busy tasks is putting more glow in the dark paint that finally arrived onto the petals that go to the tree. So that's it for now. I'm going to call it a night.